adventurers, welcome to my first q and A. I I had quite a few responses, like a few of you had a lot more questions than I thought you would and a couple of you surprised me with like how many you had, so <laughs> I think you know who you are. So I've written them all down, I've categorised them, so I'm going to start with homemade questions. So first one was how do you divide your time between each child? Um, firstly, Albert is not school age, so I tend to set him up with colouring or one of those um, ABC, one, two, three, um, wipe over books. Um, he feels like he's doing homeschool, but he's not, and this keeps him happy. And or I will set up something really cool. So I'll set up a train. I'll make a really cool train set before we start homeschooling the other two. Um, but so when I'm doing homeschooling with the other two, if he's not at nursery, he's not getting a huge amount of attention. And to be honest, when you're homeschooling siblings, that's a good thing in my opinion because they spend so much time together. I think it actually affects how they play on their own because my three and I reckon other parents whose kids are together a lot rather than separated will say the same thing is that they struggle to play on their own like when their brother and sister aren't here and they're like for mine like when when one of the siblings is gone it's fine if two of the siblings have gone they're like oh my god I don't know what to do so that sets him up for that and we always start with maths and English we, on our, this kind of goes to another question you've got in a minute, um, we do our maths on tablets, on the tablets, so they, we use Komodo maths, one of them will be, and, that's, and they can use that independently, so one of them will use Komodo maths, Charles or Bessie will use Komodo maths on a tablet, and then I will do, um, we're doing Jolly Phonics um, books with them at the moment, so, and some comprehension work, so so Bessie's on the tablet doing Komodo, I will do English with Charles and then when Charles has finished his English he has the tablet and does Komodo and I do English with Bessie and then the rest of their subjects are taught together because um, we use Twinkle for a lot of the resources um, with that and they often have a higher tier and a lower tier. Now Bessie being what she would be year one um, does the lower tier and Charles who would be year three which makes him seem really old but he's actually still quite little like to me does the three star tier which is for a more advanced child um, and that's how that works we tend to pick activities that we can do that with um, so yeah that's that's what we do um, so what organization what organizations support homeschooling quite a lot actually like yeah a lot of them do support schools like Oh, you can have a school trip here, sports key stage one curriculum. But mainly, all the ones that say they will support schools, we as home educators often go in big groups to things as a school and um, and do it that way. So like um, Scapton's Court, I don't know if they still do, in Pool used to do in Dorset, just in case you're from another part of the country. Um, <laughs> do do workshops you know places loads of things in london do them marwell zoo um which is in hampshire loads of things like that you can say as home educators go and we go in big groups and then we do a school trip um or we get group prices entrance of things we go to Paulton's park every year with an amazing group of home educators it's set up by a really dear friend of mine um and we get in for like a third of the price but also there's lots of places locally that if you go term time midweek or any time you know term time any time during the day a lot of them if you say hey we're home educators and it's kind of obvious so when you have school age children and they are not in school between like nine and three on a wednesday during term time that you're home educators they go yeah 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 and if they have like a membership price or something they will give you money off which is great we can go to a certain soft play nearby uh well, nearby it's like an hour away actually it's in pool again pull again um and we get in for like three quid less per kid or something like that it's pretty pretty cushy um will you always home ed yes i hope so because i love home educating them and i already have plans for how i'm going to navigate educating senior school stuff when it starts to get you know gcse math like when it starts to get sketchy for me I already have plans in place 
to deal with that and to help them pass those exams because they do want to take exams they have I mean Charles and Bessie's not old enough to even understand what it is but Charles does want to take GCSEs um because he, he already has career several career goals in mind and they all involve needing GCSEs so he's like yes well I uh, definitely know I want to take GCSEs so so yeah I, pr I, I would like to always home ed um, um what home ed resources do you use okay not many actually we recently decided as I said in my one of my previous videos to do I just realized sorry just how curly the back of my head is compared to this bit at the front that's really annoying me sorry <coughs> distracted there we go I can't see it now um what so we use twinkle uh, I love twinkle absolutely love twinkle twinkle people if you're watching I love you um definitely worth it for me maybe not when your kid is little but once if you've got more than one child of one age it definitely is and the older they get I really feel like it's worth it and they have loads of planning stuff now for home educators as well and stuff that's actually designed just for home educators which is awesome um we use a geography curriculum thing that we got from a home ed co-op as I've mentioned before I think it's called odd busy or something like that but it has loads of lesson plans it has all the resources and I just go download print da -da, and it's done so I like that uh, we use jolly phonics for English um, now we're getting into punctuation and grammar and stuff like that and, and the jolly phonics stuff are really really good um, and they're really good for Bessie um, I would recommend you get the teacher's book to go with like the pupil books because it has like stories and songs and stuff in it that you can do and it's really good um, I will link their website in the comment in the comments in the description box if you're interested maths we use an app called Komodo maths they are a fabulous company it's all run by maths teachers um, and they have a really good program where if you are on benefits or have a low income or a single parent family or anything like that they will help you out with your subscription fees go komodo they also send you stickers and certificates and it's all adaptable you can change the plan they put for your kids they adapt it for your child's educational needs so for example charles hates timers they make him really stressed i said this in the setup and they hid the timer so he can't see it they also dub and i said you know they're autistic they doubled the time to make sure that they had plenty of time so they didn't get panicked it's awesome um it's also there's a loose martial arts theme like so when you do a certain amount of stages you get a new belt which both of the kids really like um definitely check it out it's really really good the only thing it doesn't have is any writing work so it's all on the app um so I, every couple of weeks, make them do maths worksheets. I say make them, like, I'm standing over them with a gun. I don't. Um, heavily encourage them to do a maths worksheet where they're writing numbers with their pen. Um, to, to, to So I'm not leaving that out, because otherwise they're going to be 20-year-olds who can't write the number two, you know? So there we go. Um, everything else is kind of done by Twinkle, I think yeah or from my own brain like if it's a subject i'm really interested in like if i don't know if we were doing horses or something um then i would just pluck sh sh stuff out of mine almost swore then i'm trying really hard not to um cool blimey um i would just pluck it out of my head so do your fam <laughs> do your family support home ed and if not how do you deal with it i would say they support our choice because it's our right to choose. However, I would hazard a guess that there aren't many of them. P correct me if I'm wrong, family members, both Phil's side and mine, that actually think it's a good idea. Um, but how we deal with it, I'm actually just quite firm. I'm not the kind of person who beats around the bush and when I've come up against conflict, which I don't like, I really like shy away from conflict, but when it comes to something I'm really passionate about, and home education is something I'm very passionate about, um, I've just said, this, this is our choice, this is why we're doing it, it's not really anything to do with you, 
and we're very lucky in the sense that we have very supportive families um they love us and they respect our choices however i don't think they're hugely happy about it um but as previously said i don't care <laughs> phil and i are parenting them phil and i are home educating them and that's that sorry okay moving on from home ed parenting um so this one was a really interesting one. How do you deal with your children's anxiety? Well, it entirely depends on which child, and the person who asked this knows my children very well, it entirely depends on which child and why they're anxious. So, Charles, let's start with Albert. He's the reasonably most predictable one, i.e. the breastfeed him, <laughs> which obviously I will run out of that eventually. That will stop being an excuse. Um, but the best thing with Albert is make it routine. And actually that works for Charles as well. Whatever they're anxious about, make it normal. So for, for Albert, his recent anxiety has been going to nursery and, and with the support of his amazing key worker, Ruth. Hi Ruth, if you're watching. And um, the amazing manager, Mandy, and all the other staff, the two Karens, Rach, Libby, they were all absolutely amazing. Um, so we did an intensive course an hour for every single day for like half a term and going to nursery every single day became a routine eventually I was allowed like he would let me leave and I would just sit in the car because there's no point going home but he was just like oh this is fine and now he's there seven, 10 hours a week is he there 10 hours a week 10 hours a week and he loves it like every day he's like can I go to nursery can I go to you know, preschool I'm like no not today mate when it's not his day anymore so with Albert, it's routine. Make whatever it is a routine. So if it was the dentist that was something that was making your child anxious, talk to your dentist and try and get try and go in for five minutes once a put here. I'm gonna make Phil come on the video. Hi, babe. Uh, hello. So yeah, how would you, how would you say we deal with Bessie's anxieties? Distractions, one thing. Food, which is also really bad. <laughs> You could be like lollipop, and she'd suddenly be like, "I'm fine, hand it over," wouldn't she? Yeah. But yeah, distraction. It's distraction of something, and then once she's distracted, you can then go back and talk about what's going on. Yeah. So I think that's the main thing. But when she's like, she's really anxious about spiders, isn't she? And like, yeah. this is one thing we haven't got over is that. She's anxious about spiders. There was a, there was a spider once in our downstairs toilet months ago. <laughs> she still has not yet gone to the toilet in there. Not yeah, even. She, she has, has but she, she really struggles. Has she, I haven't seen her. Once, I think, maybe twice. But she struggles yeah. because there was a spider down there. So there must always be spiders down there. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, distracting her is probably the best thing. Um, also being playful, I think being playful with her helps because she's a really playful person, mm. like being silly. So like when she's grumpy, um, I'll do this. And we have this game called the grumpy face game and it's whoever can hold the grumpiest face the longest and she always loses because she thinks my grumpy face is hilarious. And to be fair, he's laughing. It's pretty funny, isn't it? That's not really my grumpy face, obviously. But yeah, I think making her laugh, being playful, and distracting her helps. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, chores for the kids and how it goes. <laughs> badly. It goes badly. That's how it goes. Well, we want, we ask, we have things that we expect of them that aren't chores. Or they are chores. But, like, I wouldn't call them chores. They're just, like, these are the things you should do. Yeah. Like, when they finish with a cup or bowl or a plate they take it and put it in the kitchen. Yeah. Maybe. Which I am sat here now and I can see one cup, two bowls, some cutlery. The rest of it's mine, to be fair. I just haven't taken my dinner plate out yet. So mm -hmm. they're not great at that. I would say they're not great at that. The boys are actually really good at it. Yeah, when you remind them. When you remind Bowls, plates, they're like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And they take it out. And, and even Albert will scrape his stuff into the bin. He's like, but he's a bit of a neat freak. Yeah. Don't know where he gets that from because it ain't either of us. Stacey, I'm looking at you if you're watching this. Um, that's my sister for anyone who doesn't know who that is. Um, yeah, but Bessie's not good at it at all. Yeah. And it's not that she doesn't, it's not that she can't manage it or there's like a physical reason, she just doesn't want to do it. 
I don't know whether it's like a demand thing. I'd say it's a demand thing because she's just like, you know, she's very, she's always been, I will do it. I will do anything in my own time. And I think that's just one of those things, isn't it? Yeah, but her own time could be weeks. Yeah, like, why is this plate of toast blue with mold? I'll get round to it, kind of thing. Um, her normal phrase is, I'll do it in a minute. I'll do it in a minute, yeah. And well, a minute could be anywhere from, yeah. I think I call it a parent minute because it could be anywhere from an actual minute <coughs> to like four months. <laughs> yeah, you can have a sweetie in a minute, 10 months later, still not giving that sweetie away. She's that kind of person. That'll be the kind of parent she is if she becomes a parent. Yeah. Be like, in a minute, and she, she never means it. <laughs> it's like, I ask them to make their beds every morning and they're usually all okay with that. Bessie again goes, ooh. Whenever you ask her, but the boys are like, yes, mummy, of course, mummy. I feel like their compliance is going to bite us on the butt when they're teenagers. Like, it's Possibly. it's not going to Like, it will suddenly stop. The compliance will stop and we'll be like, what's happened? Puberty's ruined our boys. Um, and I, I hope that Bessie will get better. Bessie seems, Bessie's like a, a good, good cheese. She seems to, like, get better with age. Oh, definitely. When she was a toddler, she was... Horrid. Evil. Satan. <laughs> Actually, Satan looks nice compared to Bessie when she was two, so. Um, make their beds, what else do we ask them to do? We ask them to feed their guinea pigs, which again, never <laughs> happens. Those things are only alive because we feed them. Um, yeah. Put laundry in, in the uh, laundry basket yeah, when their, they take clothes off. Put their dirty laundry in the laundry basket. Although, Charles will just wear his clothes for a month, whether he thinks they're clean, whether they're clean or dirty, and you have to be like, mate, change your damn clothes. When did you last change your pants, you gross little monkey? Um, Albert, as soon as there's even a tiny speck on his clothes, he'll be like, Phew! and will wear like four changes of clothes a day if they even get slightly dirty or even wet. If wet clothing, it's just water, in the laundry it goes, and you have to rescue it and then hang it over the banister. And then, be, and then he's like, no, 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 I can't wear that jumper, it got wet. And you're like, no, no, no. Sorry, I just realised I have my hand in front of your face. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> no one wants to look a fill. <laughs> um, yeah, and then you have to convince Albert that the jumper is in fact dry and he can wear it. Yeah. He's not going to die. Bessie, however, is the op polar opposite of Charles. I don't care whether it's clean or dirty. I'm not even going to check in the laundry it goes. And this happened when I was putting her to bed earlier. I was like, this is still clean. You can wear it tomorrow. And she went, no, I've worn it. It has to go in the laundry. And I just said, then you can do the laundry. And she went, it's fine, mummy, put it back in my box. And I was like, oh, oh, oh. Um, I also have in, when we go on to talking about, I can hear Charles singing. When we talk about home organization in a minute. I also have this binder and it has in there jobs that I expect them to do when I'm doing certain things. So they're actually jobs that are on my list to do that day. And if they want pocket money on a Saturday, they have to complete these jobs five days out of seven. They have one job a day. They have one each. That's extra into the ones I've said. They're not very good at completing it. I will buy stuff for them, but I won't actually hand money over to them unless they've done these things because I'm trying to teach. This is a teachable moment. It's not going well so far. But to be fair, I haven't also haven't reminded them. So probably my fault too. Um, yeah, so how do you cope with frustrations? Me personally, or their, or their frustrations? I could answer both. Their frustrations, well, again, being safe, give them their space, let them kick off, and just keep reminding them that they're loved, and you know, I love you, I'm here for you, I'm not leaving you, because um, even if they shout go away, they don't really want you to go away. And I make sure my body language is open, so it comes with my arms, but like my arms are open, and I keep them, when you're ready, I'm here for a cuddle, and they always, they always want to have a cuddle when they're done. Um, so if a frustration goes that far, that's how I deal with it. Um, but if it's just like, quite often, the big frustration that Charles has is when he's playing video games, if he's playing on the Wii or the Xbox with Phil or on his own. Um, doesn't ha he doesn't do it very often because not, I'm not really into letting him play games. But when he does, the games are a bit too old for him and he can't manage it. And then he gets really frustrated and he's just like, <gasps> and he cries and he's really upset. And I'm just like, hey, just turn it off for 10 minutes and then go back onto it. No! And 
with Charles, it's a bit of a tough love situation almost because he won't do what's good for him. Um, and sometimes I just say, well, if you can't do it, just come off of it and then try again another day. And that doesn't make him happy, but it does work because it calms the frustration down. I just realized I'm sat on some random plastic toys from a magazine. Um, but mainly I encourage them to breathe. We, you know, we do a lot of meditation as a family and we try to do yoga when we can. Um, at the moment we haven't got the space for it in our lounge. But I just encourage them to breathe. Um, and we talk about it. We talk a lot. We talk about anything that's upsetting us a lot. Um, and yeah. We just talk about it, really. I help them calm down and then we talk about it. I saw, I see you were feeling frustrated. I think you were feeling frustrated because of this and they might go, yes, that's exactly what was it. Like, no, actually I was feeling frustrated because of this and that just made it worse or whatever. Um, this is a really difficult question. Phil and I have different answers, so I might get him over here to answer this question. This is from my friend Nat. Um, if you could choose one thing to prepare your children for adulthood, what would it be? So the thing that pops into my head is teaching them financial responsibility and how, how to save their money and how to work and how it's like developing a work ethic and then financial responsibility. Bill, what was your answer? Uh, He's coming. He's coming. Run, Phil. Run. You know what I want. Uh, I think I said the real cost of living. So once you move out from your parents' house, whether you move in, it all with, goes downhill. <laughs> or move into a place for your own. Just how much things will cost because as a teenager yes you might have your own money because you've got a little job but none of that money most of the time will go towards anything that goes into the house so most parents won't make their teenagers pay bills or put money towards the bills so when they move out suddenly they've got rent to pay they've got water bills they've got tax council tax and they need to know how to set all those things up yeah and setting things up like that setting up direct debits dealing with issues when they do come up if something's not paid that sort of thing i think is a really important life skill because how often you get taught things like that in school yeah i think can i have a second one which is no, completely different not. don't be mean so i the only other thing i have is social responsibility that's the other one I think is really important. So I am gonna have two. And I think Nat, who asks this answer, they will really like this answer. A social responsibility in that um, you are not the most important person. You are, what did you say? Part of. Part of, I thought you told me to, thought you told me to off then. <laughs> Rude. Um, you are not the most important person actually the planet is incredibly important and is way more important than you as an individual and our community as a whole is as important as you so a social responsibility towards others to encourage other people and give where you can and support local causes support your community there we go <coughs> financial and social responsibility i'm smushing them together don't take my list. I'm just moving it so I can sit down because you're taking up the whole sofa again. Okay, so that's the end of part one because this video is going to be really long. See you in a bit.